Victor Rasta, full name Victor Sedgovich Rastavili, born September 4th, 1944, Georgia, Russia. His father had the distinction of being tried and hanged by the USSR for the crime of brigandage. Brigandage? Burning villages, raping women. That sort of thing goes on in Russia, huh? In past, during war. Not now. Mm hmm According to you. According to this, Victor spent three years in the army and six on a forced labor camp for drug offenses. Is currently wanted in the USSR on the charges of murder, kidnapping, rape, extortion, currency speculation, and drug dealing. Where did you get this information? Well, your boys in Washington have decided to be incredibly cooperative since Victor split. In fact, they got a whole new attitude. I hear they're sending over some caviar later. Why didn't you tell us this before? I had no authorization. Bullshit. My government does not like to do laundry in public. Is there anything else we should know about? I will not leave this country without Victor. I need cooperation. Okay. You want to stick around and find Victor, Captain? That's uh, fine by me. One more thing, Captain. I don't want the press to get near you. And I don't want you rolling through this town like the Red Army. Have you wigged out? Danko is the perfect weapon, Charlie. A loose cannon. If he helps us find Victor Rasta, great. If he screws up, breaks rules along the way, he's a Russian. Mm, but what about Ridzik? Ridzik is a good cop and a total expert at fucking up. Departmentally speaking, I got no downside here. Somebody that thinks he's tough as an instinct. But they all come to speed for the go ray me. Now get this. We ain't partners. We ain't brothers and we ain't friends. My little brother was 15 years old. Think about that. You're with him, How about cutting heat? Oh, I get it. You want some kind of contest, huh? You're a real smart boy, is he? I guess maybe you'll have to kill me. I finally ran into someone that likes to lay as rough as I do. Yeah, this must be your lucky night. And my body? They're not nice like me. Are we supposed to say thanks? You're not supposed to say nothing, soldier. Look, uh, just out of curiosity, how do you Soviets deal with all the tension and stress? Vodka. Police Captain Ivan Danko came from behind the Iron Curtain. Darko, you're welcome. <laughs> Hunting down his country's deadliest criminal. What did he do? He take a leak on the Kremlin wall or something? I need cooperation. Sure, whatever you say, Gummy. Now, he's about to team up. Give me some your mamos I need What'd he say? He say, go and kiss your mother's behind. With the most unpredictable cop. How you doing, honey? Drop dead. Thank you. On the streets of Chicago. You look like Marvin Hagler to me. I lost money on Hagler. Dr. Delisa. He's got his own kind of style. And body language is a beautiful thing, isn't it? He's got no style at all. Chicago cop never relinquishes his weapon. Here. Rizik is a good cop. And a total expert at fouling up. You did not make it, Victor. You kill a Chicago police officer, Chicago gets him first. I have my honor. With this much friction, I give up. This whole thing's very Russian. There's gotta be heat. I take care of this. Red heat. Final 
Schwarzenegger, James Belushi, in a Walter Hill film. Nice work, Gumby. Thank you. I didn't mean that. I know. Red Heat. Hello, folks, and welcome to Last Call of Torchies. We've been away for a while, so let me remind you what this is. This is our career-spanning uh, retrospective, which is a word I hate, I guess, of uh, Walter Hill's oeuvre, his, his, his directing career, and eventually we'll do some of his writing stuff, too. We've done a little bit on the Patreon. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. Uh, with me tonight is... Uh, the the main head honcho of the Cinema Degeneration universe, Cameron Scott. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me again. Uh, having you. You're, you're one of the co-hosts, dude. Come on now. <laughs> well, I mean, we just re- recorded last night, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, I know. But, I know. But behind, <laughs> behind the curtain, if you will. Yeah. Yes. Um, and also, one half of the They Must Be Destroyed on site podcast, sometimes one third, depending if Daniel shows up. Mr. Lee Russell, how you doing, sir? Oh, excellent. And I uh, just want to say, in Soviet Russia, movie podcasts about you. <laughs> Is potato. <laughs> oh, man. Bringing the Irish into it now. God damn it. No. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're here. The, um, oh, I forgot to mention, there is there is some, some Walter Hill news, I guess, since we've been away a long time. Since then, uh, his new feature, Dead for a Dollar, is out on streaming and and, um, DVD and possible Blu-ray. I don't know if it's on Blu-ray or not. But um, I've heard, you know, middling to to, two decent things. Uh, The the trailer does not reflect, I heard the trailer, I watched the the trailer, the trailer does not reflect the film I hear that, I hear it's a better film than the trailer gave it, so... Um, hopefully I have a better review for you next time the show comes on. Just a small, small inkling because we'll, we'll, we'll get to it eventually. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I plan on watching it. It's just like when I saw that trailer, it's like, oh, I don't like the idea of Walter Hill not shooting on film stock. Like, it's just, it looked too clean and too modern for my taste. I was like, oh, please, no. I hope it's better than the trailer. That, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like the trailer was all right, but man, please be better than the trailer. Mm. Yeah, but we're here tonight to uh, talk about um, uh, a native Russian in Chicago um, <laughs> <laughs> with, with Red Heat, uh, featuring, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, <clears throat> who's red hot at this time. Wait, wait, wait a minute. We watched Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, w- I watched Red Heat with Linda Blair. I got to, I got to oh, go back. Damn. I got to go back. Oh, Wrong movie. <laughs> Shit. Maybe, maybe we'll do it as a bonus. I don't even care. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's that like should have been her bonus. She, she, she might take her top off in that movie. I don't know. She, she might do it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I derailed us. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, already Red Hot at the time. This is 1988. Um, just this was Twins. And The Running Man and Commando yeah, this, and all the this, stuff he loves. This, this is him at 40 years old. Yeah. Man. I'm not, I'm not, saying, he's not, yeah. a, I'm not saying he's not a brick shit house now. He, he's uh Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, I, I I wish I looked that good at 40. Holy fuck. Yeah. It's, it's all oh, about, God. I wish I looked half that good. <laughs> it's, it's all about conditioning and apparently horrors, because if you watch Pumping Iron, he just... Uh, Mm. He's a penchant for the for the ladies, apparently. Yeah, I love to come. <laughs> I love to come. Just coming and coming, and you know, I come every day. <laughs> <laughs> this, of course, features Jim Belushi as as our American Chicago cop foil to to um, I- Ivan Danko. His name is Art Art Ridzik in this movie. Uh, Peter Boyle is in this film as uh, yeah. the captain, of course. Ed Ross is, is uh, of course, our, our villain, uh, playing Russian Victor Ro- Rostel- Ro- Ros- whatever. I don't even care. I'm not going to say the word. But um, Rostovili, yeah. I believe it is. Yeah. Something, like, yeah, something like that. You get young Larry Fishburne in this movie with Lieutenant Stobbs. Gina, mm. Yeah, Gina Gershon as Cat Man- Manzetti. Um, Richard Bright, Sergeant Gallagher. 
Uh, we get some favorites show up in this, of course. We get Brian James as the informant streak. Uh, <laughs> he looks like he looks like Diamond Dallas Page. He does. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was the only one that was making that connection. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Pe- Peter Jason shows up as TV announcer in this mm. movie. Yeah. So you get a quick, quick uh, where have I seen this guy? Pruitt Taylor Vince. I'll look him up later. I don't want, I don't want to de- derail things here. But, um, yeah, this movie is, is about Arnie, who's a Russian cop, who comes to America to pursue um, a drug dealer who um, fleed the country after killing his partner. And, of course, um, he has to work with the Chicago Police Department. And, namely, you know, good cop, bad cop, uh, Jim Belushi, who's slightly possibly racist in this movie, or he's just having a little too much fun with this, this, this communism falling thing possibly soon. Uh it already happened yeah. at this point? I don't even remember. No, it's what, 89, 90, something around there when yeah. that happened, right? It's, it's coming yeah. soon. But, um, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's your basic plot of the movie. They're chasing them all around Chicago. This this Ed O'Ross character, Victor, who's uh, a bad dude who has a, I love a good spring loaded weapon. He has that, that bad oh, yeah. gun. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. And he, at, at, at some point, he fixes the silencer to the fucking thing. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, but he Travis Bickled that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. But l- l- let's be clear, like off the bat, this is basically a retread of Forty Eight Hours. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Oh yeah. yeah, like a culture clash. Yeah, yeah. But except you know, co- communist Russia versus America, Chicago, hot dogs, no ketchup. Yeah. Come on, bro. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, you, if you're the international person. In Chicago, it's sacrilege to put ketchup on a hot dog. It, it just is, you know. But, I mean, I I can back that. I can back that up. I, I'm I'm all for that. Chicago's got it right there. Oh boy, I'll I'll kick it to Cameron first. Um, initial thoughts or whatever on uh, Red Heat, sir. Uh, initial thoughts were back in the day. I was all about this movie. I was all about Arnie. I was even a big Belushi fan. And I remember this being a big movie back in the day and loving the hell out of it. Uh, this particular rewatch, it has not aged as well for me. Some of the overt, uh, like, racism from Belushi's character is just kind of uncomfortable. It's just like, mm-hmm. eesh, you know. It's, but it's got a great cast. You've already named off, like, 90% of the, the big names that are in it. But I think that's the best thing about this movie is the eclectic cast from Peter Boyle to little Larry Fishburne, young, young like, pre-Morpheus, you know? He's, he's and playing, you know, like, uh, Detective Malcolm X or some shit in this. Like, Yeah, yeah. He's basically playing the Andrew Robinson role out of Cobra. He's yeah. Guy, yeah, you know, he's just basically that guy. But it's a it's a great movie. It's it's a typically eighties. It's you know, it's Americans versus the commie Russians. You know, I mean, it, it's still kind of very uh, <laughs> poignant today. I guess I I'm not sure, but uh, it, it's just, it's just very weird. It's just very oddly paced for uh, a uh, Walter Hill movie. And after like Extreme Prejudice, you know, which is you know the movie previous to this one, it's very light on the action. It's more about the banter between Belushi and Arnold. Uh, but I still like it. It was an entertaining watch, but I think I kind of understand why this was not like in my my wheelhouse or not in my uh, you know my, my constant rotation of Arnold flicks. You know, I might rewatch Predator all the time or Terminator or T2 all the time. This one just didn't get a lot on the rotation. And it's I think it's just because uh, my, my taste buds have cha- changed over the years, but... I still like it. It's just um, I'm gonna th- throw this out here, but it just didn't feel much like a Walter Hill movie. It felt more like an Arnold movie. But uh, that, that's my, my my summary. You know, in '88, though, you know, working with Arnie this time again, we we mentioned and you, you guys should know this if you guys are Arnie fans. This is the time to be Arnie. The time you're watching Arnie. You know, between this era and um. Yeah, I can see. I don't even know if he was very demanding because the way the way they talk on the Wikipedia, even in like uh, like um, th- this film starts with an epic uh, 
bathhouse fight scene. Oh my god! Where, where you, get, you get to see Arnie's buns, and he wasn't he wasn't ashamed to show up his buns at this time. Everybody uh, in that bathhouse was <laughs> a, was in shape to show their everything, and they did. That was it was like is, is is this a thing that actually was in Russia at some point? Like, did they have these like unisex bathhouses that are just like everyone's cool? It's like fucking Starship Troopers before Starship Troopers, you know? Right, right. B- b- bunch of dudes having a sweat. Okay, come on now. <laughs> But I mean, he gets he gets in a fight with Finn Oli Thorson, you yeah, know, beats him up like he yep. like he does pretty much every time Finn shows up in a Narnie movie. And then Tiger Chung Lee of all fucking people, professional wrestler Tiger right. Chung Lee, yes. is, yeah. I made note of that. I was like, Tiger Chung Lee, what the fuck? I didn't remember him being in this at all, like at all. His character name is Mongolian Hippie for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Are there a lot of Mongolian hippies in? Uh... In these like Soviet bathhouses, I'm just, oh, just I don't know, but I don't know, but Tiger Chung Lee, he's Korean. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, more of the racism there. It's just like, yeah, you know, they all look alike, right? Oh, uh, and then Jim Belushi yeah. shows up and says, "Hey, Mongolia, great barbecue, huh? Come on now." <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, go ahead, Lee. Your your, your thoughts, sir. Um, I enjoyed this. I mean, it's fun. Like, it, like I, I didn't feel like it necessarily. Um, I, I will say, you know, Cameron's right. It, it does sort of take its time getting to places. Like, it's very weirdly paced at times. But I, I found it was generally pretty engaging. Like, I, I never felt myself getting bored watching it. That's for sure. Like, I, I thought. And he, and here's the thing. I'm not a Jim Belushi fan at all. Like, I'm, I'm not a big fan of his. I, I kind of feel like he's always been kind of a less talented, cruder Bill Murray wannabe in, in a lot of ways. Like, it, it just feels like what his character always sort of comes off as. But here, paired with Arnie, he kind of works as just playing this schlubby asshole cop that, you know, and they, they learn to like each other and respect each other along the way and kind of thing. And, like, they do that really well. Like, the two central performances do carry this really well and and Arnold is very reserved in this too right like he's not spouting off one-liners or anything like that like he's very strict and rigid and cold he's very Terminator like in a lot of ways uh you know going into that sort of Arnie mode instead um but yeah it's generally okay like I said 48 hours retread definitely and it's definitely the more commercial 1980s action cop movie version of 48 hours um so like when we're saying that it doesn't feel as much like a walter hill film as what's come before i definitely agree with that as well it's like we're we are so far away from the driver at this point that it's like it doesn't feel like the same director but that being said I still thought it was pretty damn good. Like, it was still yeah. really enjoyable. Um, it's got a lot of great actors in it. It's got a lot of nice little bit performances here and there. Gina Gershon looking like fucking million dollars, like smoking hot in this. Oh, um, damn. Yeah, yeah, she was smoking. <laughs> uh, Peter Boyle, I always like seeing him show up in something that's not everybody loves Raymond. So, like... Uh, and I, I got it. I actually got my biggest laugh out, out of Peter Boyle's like first appearance where he's like um, showing Arnold the ways he reduces stress so he can avoid that second heart attack or whatever, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> where he's like, yeah, I've I've got, you know, I've got like I've got these soothing sounds and I'm, you know, uh, doing this and that, you know, trying to try to avoid stress. How do you avoid stress in Russia? And Arnold's just like vodka. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, Both uh, ways really work. Both ways do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, I, I do feel like this film has one fatal flaw in that the rest of the film had to live up to that fake leg being torn off and he's pouring out the cocaine. Cause oh, that's, yeah. Because that's a jarring moment, right? Like, um, he goes and just grabs that dude's legs and starts twisting and like, what kind of fucking movie is this? He's just about to fucking rip that guy's leg off. Oh no, it's a fake leg. Okay. I get it. Um, but it's like, that was such a great moment. And I don't feel like there's really a moment that tops that in the rest of the film, but it was still fairly enjoyable. This is kind of like, 
I'd say like lower mid tier Walter Hill for me at this point. Like it, it's above Crossroads, but it's you know it, it's definitely not touching any any of like the the great stuff. Like it, it's it, it's uh it's him doing a commercial buddy cop movie. It's it's not as like I said it's far and away from the driver there's there's nothing deep going on here it's it's much more about the fun performances and the action cool um first off um i always get this film you know i guess title wise because when i said i'm looking for this movie i always seem to find raw deal instead which is oh yeah another Arnie film I think mm-hmm. he, I think he hits somebody with a cake in that movie, or he gets hit with a cake in that movie. I, I forget. How uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen that one. It's something with a cake, and I can't stop laughing when it happens. But you know, it's, mm. it's um, again, I don't remember the plot. I think movie. he gets hit with a cake. I think so. I have to go back. <laughs> I have to go back and look for it. Now. God damn it! Mm. But remember, in the, in that movie, his middle name his middle name stood for pussy. Oh, there you go. Because <laughs> he's like, what's a P stand for? Pussy. <laughs> Sorry, my, you're going to get a lot of bad Arnold impersonations out of me tonight. Hey, that's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it now. Kill me, I'm here. <laughs> Come on, ugly. Wrong movie. I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just, I just wanted Arnold to turn to Jim Belushi at one point and go, "You are one ugly motherfucker." Man, <laughs> he's rough. I mean, this this is a Jim Belushi that I, I'm kind of into because he's still k- kind of playing that role. He, he played like a year before, which in, in The Principal, which is a film that I can't get enough of for some reason. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah, I love The Principal. Maybe it's a combination of him and Oga Lugas <laughs> Jr. and then we, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. And if we're feeling especially fun, one day we'll do an impromptu cinema beef where we do that in Abraxas. Because the Braxis, oh. for some reason, has a loose tie to the principal because he comes yeah. back as the same principal in that movie. That's right. For yeah, like, that's for right. For like a second. You know? That's right. He does cameo <laughs> in that shit, doesn't he? For oh, no reason at all. <laughs> God. He did Braxis. it as a favor to old Jesse the Body, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Braxis exists for no reason at all. So, like, that's... <laughs> that's S- perfectly fits. Yeah. Sec- secundus. Come on now. Yeah. Secundus. <laughs> This movie, though, you know, I, as again, you, you gotta love the city that you're in, and they, they filmed Chicago very well in this movie in the late '80s, and it has that feel to it, which I, I will give Walter Hill all, all the credit of the world for that. If yeah, for um, capturing that atmosphere, uh, much like Running Scared does, I, I feel the same same flow of stuff in this movie where I see stuff, but Running Scared's a little more because you get. The Prudential Building, you get the the L train, you get all kinds of other crazy stuff. But mm. <clears throat> I know, I know, I know. Arnold at one point runs over a landmark or something with a bus. He's like, "You just ran over a Chicago landmark." You, <laughs> yeah, when they play chicken with the bus, you know. Yeah, yeah, which was like a trivia point, right? Because it was like Walter Hill's like, "We can't fit Arnold in a traditional car." So we might as well do a bus chase instead. Might as well. Is, Why not? It's just, yeah. but that's, go that's, big or go home, right? Yeah, that's that's great. That's actually good filmmaking as far as I'm concerned. Like, let's escalate it. We got bigger than life guys. Let's put them in bigger than life vehicles. And, no, it ups uh, the ante, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, yeah, their, their, their chemistry is fine. I mean, you, you get you get the, 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 the stuff that you're going to get in 1988, uh, even down to where you, you they, do, they do respect each other because in the end – after the, the, the bus, you know, thing happens, uh, our bad guy's bus, Victor's bus gets hit by a train. He's still alive. Um, Arnie wants to go get his man no matter what. So good, good old um, Art there, his, his American partner, says, what does he say? Something along the lines of, I'll, I'll honk if you need me or something. I yeah. He says. Like, go get him, Gumby, honk if you need me, or something like that. I yeah. love that he calls yeah. him Gumby in this movie. <laughs> I don't know where it is. It's that big green suit, man. <laughs> it's so good. But um, I'm Gumby, damn it. I'm Gumby, damn it. But yeah, the, that, that, that scene there it is great. But then you get to the scene at the end where there, he takes him to the airport, and he's still fucking making fucking racist-ass jokes. What are they going to do to get back to Russia? You going to train those dancing bears or something, boy, huh? Come on, now. 
It's like after all you sh- shared and you've been through, he's like, you could just stop being a dick for just like five seconds. Just five seconds. Yeah. But, you know, it's that it's that fucking little Bill Murray spark that he's trying to, like, ignite there. It's just he's always got to have, like, a last thing to say. He's always got to have a little dig to throw in there. Mm-hmm. It's got to be like, smarmy at, some, at, at every turn. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's, but, even a, he's even a dick to the poor waitress when they're in that fucking diner, you know, where it's like, at first he's like, whoa, don't pour me more coffee. It's the right color that I will I like, and it's the only thing I got going for me tonight, sweetheart. And then, like, two seconds later, hey, get, can I get a fucking refill here? It's like, you're, you're a fucking asshole, man. <laughs> you know, not, not, the, not the him being a dick about the refill thing, but I can get behind uh, my coffee's the right color because when I'm in a restaurant, they, they come around with the thing. I'll mm-hmm. tell them no, I'm good for right now. But then you want that that, that second or third cup of coffee eventually, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, and, and, no, I, and I'm with you. Like when he, the first thing he said, I was like, okay, that's fine. That makes sense. He's had a bad night, and yeah. he's got his coffee. That's the only thing he's got going for him. He's, uh, I think, at that point, he's already spilled coffee on his crotch or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know, let, let, let the man have his fucking coffee. But it's like it's literally like a minute later. He's like, hey, toots. Can I get some fucking coffee here or what? What the fuck's going on? Uh, yeah, that's 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 funny, man. Yeah, but they're mm. fine. Peter Boyle's great. Yeah. Um, Larry Fishburne, he doesn't get a lot to do in this movie. You could you could tell like within like what's King of, King of New York is like two years later, isn't it? Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah, he's gonna be a star. You could tell at this point that he got he got inklings of that. He's got the presence, right? Like it's like he, if he was in it more, you would like respond to it a lot more. Like it, it feels right, like he right. had a bigger. If he had a bigger part, he would have kicked off even earlier because he's really good in it for the little bit he has. He's got range. He's just, this is Cowboy Curtis, people. Okay, come on. Uh-huh. You know. <laughs> From Cowboy Curtis to this to Morpheus, I mean, yeah. Come on. Uh, I, I, it still blows my mind when I found out, like, I don't know, like five years back, that the king of cartoons and Blackula were the same person. I, I, like, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it, it does. It does weird you out at times when you like you're, you're doing research on this stuff. You're we're, oh, we're gonna do Blackula this this month or whatever on the podcast, and it's like, wait a second. <laughs> What the fuck? Like, he yeah. was in this? Yeah, no he was shit, in that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> this is the I, 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 oh, God, sorry, good. I was just going to say, I, I was uh, say, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was thinking of the opening, and it, it, it just struck me now. Like, basically, they accused Arnold of having soft hands, and that's why he started punching dudes. It's just because yeah. they put the, because he's like, it looks at his hands like, that's not the hand of a factory work, worker or whatever the fuck. And then it's like, he, because they're used to the heat. That they put the hot fucking rock in there. Yeah. He's going to punch you. Exactly. Yeah. With, with the hot rock in his hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if uh, with the magic of that, he's actually holding a hot rock, you know, but uh, it's. Uh... I kind of doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. But his hand is huge. You can see. And it's just like, it's like a fucking mitt, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and um, why wouldn't that be the hand of a, of a working man? And. It's almost like uh, that scene in Jaws. These are city hands. We count money all your life, you know. It's a yeah. <laughs> you look at you look at how fucking big his hands are in this movie, and then you think about like the pictures of him standing next to Andre the Giant and Conan the Destroyer. Uh huh. The backstage, like you know, the behind the scenes pictures and stuff, and you see how much bigger fucking Andre the Giant was. And then people talk about how big his hands were. It's like, how could how could Andre the Giant even like do anything with his hands like that that was like you know the normal shit that you and i can do with our hands it's like man there's a there's a point where your hands get too big so celebrities with yeah. huge hands number one mm. tony todd okay come on now i, I I'm, <laughs> I'm sure i'm sure cameras met tony uh, his his hands will a engulf couple times your, his hands will engulf your hands okay and he wants to shake your hands so it's a uh... wow I met him at 16, and he shook my hand. I felt like a like a baby. I was just like, whoa, <laughs> this, this is kind of scary. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. This is Dean here, I think, because he did a little research for the role. Schwarzenegger said that Walter Hill told him to watch Greta Garber's performance in Nina Kotchka, I think that's how you pronounce that, from 1939. 
uh, <laughs> to, to get a handle on how Danko should react as a loyal Soviet in the West. Uh, I got to oh. learn, learn a little Russian. And buh, 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 buh. it was a role in which my accent was a plus. I I don't know about that. Um, that was another note I had. It's like somehow it feels like Arnie's accent sticks sticks out even more in Russia as a sore thumb than it does in America. Like, yeah. Because <laughs> it like as soon as he started talking, it's like oh no, there's that Austrian Hungarian fucking cadence going on there. It's like like he says the words fine, but it's like. The the uh, bad guy you're chasing, who was like an American actor or whatever, I think, right? He, he's he's doing a better Russian than you are, like definitely. Yeah, well, he doesn't say much either. Yeah, yeah I guess, but you know, still. <laughs> I mean, I've seen I've seen Ed Ross in about a hundred things that I can't name right now, but um, yeah, he he never sounded Russian to me in any of those things. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no. <laughs> I was actually just watching him in the Hidden just like the day before yesterday, yeah, and I'm like, wow, how. Guy, how yeah. Yeah, how different you know from one role to the next. Yeah, that's, that's, I I that's love that is I love that one of his fucking eyebrows is just like he's got like a little upturn in the middle where it's it's like a spike. He's got it spiked. It's like so weird, just a, like a little weird character thing about him oh where it's God. like th- this is my look, you know, like because <laughs> it's not like he's got an obvious scar or anything across his face that like cuts through his eyebrow or anything it's just his look it's yeah. what he does because yeah. because that would you would, you would think that would it wouldn't be so messy if like he got cut maybe it grew back in wrong or something you know yeah right <laughs> oh my gosh um filming locations this is cool too first half of the opening scene was shot in Budapest's rudest thermal bath that's a real place it features okay. a brawl between, na- between naked men, including Schwarzenegger. <laughs> well, they're wearing like a loincloth or something. Yeah, he, something. He approved the scene that whatever the scene calls for nudity, if, if it fits in the movie, I don't mind. But if, if it is ex- exploiting the whole idea and it's thrown in for no reason, then it bothers me and I'll stay away from it. So apparently just fighting a bunch of naked dudes and throwing them in the snow is not a problem. I wonder what I wonder what his idea of exploitive nudity is because <laughs> that whole scene is exploitive nudity. Like, come on, dude! It was like watching like a PG thirteen version of Eastern Promises. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, it's just like exactly. it's got everything but flop and dong in there. You know. Yeah. Like, so cleverly edited to cut out all the dong. All the dong. Like, I'm sure maybe that's the rea- maybe that's totally the reality of the Russian, you know, bathhouse where everyone looks like a fucking Russian super agent. You know, everyone's got a great body and everything. <clears throat> but well, you mentioned they were all they they mentioned they were all you know working men, so maybe they were all like construction guys or something. This is why they were so big, you know. Ah, man, I don't know because every every other shot of Russia outside of that bathhouse, everyone just looks like typical people. Typical people. But, but I mean, and then everyone in that looks like they're part of like Gold's Gym or some shit, right? Like they're just fucking, fucking rocking it. Um, that's that's socialist Russia for you, though. The government, I guess. the government pays for our muscles, you know. Like, like, is this an offshoot of like uh, Smirsh or something like that or whatever? Fight, fought James Bond, you know, or Spectre, where you know they have like the the getaways where they have their agents and they're training them into Superman, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about like, that scene in Austin Powers now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. fucking like it, it, it just, it just felt. Cause that's a, that was my initial thought. Like I've never seen this before. Right. So it's like, I didn't quite know what was going on at first. And I was like, okay, we're in this Russian bathhouse. I know Arnie's a good guy, so he's obviously infiltrating something. Is it like is it like a Russian spy like fucking thing like or some sort of like criminal organization thing you know where they've got like all their people training and shit because like there's people like pumping iron and shit in the place too right oh yeah they're getting it, they're getting it in man you know yes yeah, so like I I was a little confused at first like oh no this is just a bathhouse that has yeah. to be you know have some criminals in it that he's like looking for like some drug dealers and shit and. Yeah, it was it was a little initially a little confusing, but I mean, also because uh, where I watched it um, in an illicit movie site, no. uh, yeah, no. um, I didn't have the subtitles on, so initially it was all in Russian. I was like, "What are they saying? Is this a choice of the movie? Like, I should see like hard burned in subtitles, right?" No, you would think so. so yes, yeah. 
But no, I actually had to turn the subtitles on and rewind the whole fucking thing. So <laughs> I'd imagine in its theatrical run, it had hard coded subtitles, or else you'd be yeah. confused as hell, you know. Uh, oh yeah, you'd be missing half the subplot, especially in the first fifteen minutes of this movie, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Yeah, that was that was exactly it. That was the first fifteen minutes. It's like, <laughs> wait a second, I better check this. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the second half was shot in Austria because Budapest has those the, the, the fight. I mean, once Arnie chucks the guy out the window into the snow, oh, because uh, they had no snow in Budapest. Apparently, um, this is pretty cool here because again, you're still very much the wall is still very much a thing. Um, this mm-hmm. film is it was shot in Moscow for four days, primarily in Red Square which became possible due to the rapid warm-up of the cultural and political re- re- relations between the Soviet Union and the United States. So it was getting better at this point. Despite obtaining permission to film in Moscow, the film crew was unsure about exactly where they could shoot. Hence, many Moscow scenes were eventually filmed in Budapest. For example, Buda Castle was used as the Soviet Ministry of Home Affairs, where their, where their, yeah. uh, their headquarters was. Yeah, and I, and I was I was kind of like wondering because you know you, yeah sure sure Russia especially you know parts of it but not necessarily Moscow you know they're they're farther up north and shit but like it it's stated at one point when they're in Chicago that it's in August um would it would there really be that much snow and shit in Russia at that point like in August like they, they still have summers over in Russia I I know it's it's not necessarily as hot as fucking like the like fucking Chicago in in August, or you know the Deep South, or anything like that. You know, like it's it's a different, a little bit of a different uh, switch there. But um, it, it it feels like you know everyone shouldn't be necessarily wearing like, uh, like uh, really warm trench coats and shit in August in Russia. It, it doesn't seem like it makes sense to me. But it's, it's about a crisp twenty two degrees in what Russia in August. I think you know they, they got to keep Are we, they, they got to keep those dancing bears on ice. You know. I guess. I guess. <laughs> so, are we talking twenty-two Fahrenheit? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Possible. I, I don't know how, how weather works. Come on, now. It's just kind of, <laughs> it's, it's cold that, outside. Yeah. You know. Because that's well, bad. No, I don't either. Because that's well below zero. But if it's like, if, but if it's like twenty-two Celsius, then like, yeah, the, the, none of them are wearing coats at that point. Like that. That's that's just ludicrous. But but if they if they shot like like you said, they they went to a different uh, location. Uh, you know, like a mountainous region. Or something like that, where there there would be snow, then the, then that makes sense. But so already had a rare chance to go home in this movie, so that's that's kind of strange, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so home wasn't a good place for Arnie, apparently, if you know know his history. Um, right, right. Um, this is a, like there's a, there's a reference in this movie, right, to 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 his like his real life dad, because. His dad was in the army or something along those lines. Also died like around the same time that his character in this movie says that his dad died. I know. I'm not sure Artie's dad was in the military um, for sure. I know he was like a freaking big Nazi sympathizer, though. It was, it was severely abusive to him. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was a bad scene. Artie's uh, upbringing. You know. That sucks. So it's a good thing he he came to America and found uh, fame and fortune, I guess, and as a bodybuilder, oh, yeah. and then, you know, a star, if you will. Um, and then for all of his uh, for all of his his faults and stuff, at least he's not a fucking Nazi. Yeah, it, it, yeah. He, he did get the American dream. He 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 came to the states, became famous, and then married a Kennedy, and uh, that, that's a. Uh, mm. I guess that's the American dream, and then he then he then he banged the help, but that that's um. I mean, he he does have a he does have a a liking to those Latino ladies. He does, he does. Mar- when, you, when you look, Maria Cachito yeah, Alonso, come on now. Exactly when when you when when you look at the uh, the, the the female co stars in a lot of his films, they always tend up to be turn out to be like Latino. Uh, Princesses of some sort. He has a type. He definitely yeah, he does. has a type. Definitely does. Uh, the weapon um, Victor has, as the weapon of the main villain, Victor uh, Hill wanted, wanted to be a concealed mafia style gun. La France designed it to be a modified Derringer, which is strapped to his forearm during in a, in a spring-based system. So somebody built this fucking thing. 
Uh, mm. The gun was hidden in his sleeve and slid into the hand after at, at, after a certain hand moment. You know, so uh, it wasn't on a slide like on um, uh, was it Desperado where, where he had the slide the slide gun uh, underneath his sleeve. Right. I, I forget now. It's pretty. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool too. But this was like literally shot out uh, of uh, his sleeve and. Ready, ready to rock and roll to kill somebody. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, like, what, Desperado has it, uh, like Cameron mentioned, the uh, taxi driver, there's there's mm-hmm. that. And um, it, it, it's it's definitely a thing that's popped up in several movies over the years. But it's very cool. And I, I know um, uh, the, the, the standard police pistol that um, Arnie has is, a, like, a fake gun that they made up for the movie. Yep. Um, yeah, just a lot of cool action set pieces in this movie. I, I, I do enjoy my time with it, but it is, it is lesser Walter Hill film, like, like they say, and I think it has a lot to do with the way Walter Hill does a lot of rewrites, and apparently the rewrites were, like, rampant on this one, and he was really going on the fly with it, so mm. it's just, um, I think it hurts the film a little bit, but I, I don't, I don't regret my time with it. It's just not as good as, uh, some of his other stuff, but it feels, it feels very 1988, just, 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 you know, I, I will say that. Oh, oh, yeah, it feels 88 on the nose. T- t- mm. Tensions of the time, you know, the references they make to where if you, if you don't know your history, if you're you're young and watching this movie, you might not get this stuff. But since we're right in of the age to, to, to when we were 10 or, 10 or 9 or whatever, we were kind of, for some reason, looking at the news at this time. When this was happening, when Desert Storm was happening, and you know, oh yeah, I mean, all yeah. all three of us grew up in a period where there was still fear of like a nuclear bomb could drop, yeah, and kill us all. Like we we were we were we were like the leftover dregs of like the whole Cold War fear that like existed for a good twenty five thirty years. So, so like it was still very much real for oh, all yeah. three of us, like growing up watching this. Oh show. yeah. And seeing and seeing all the news and and seeing all the animosity and shit between the nations and everything like like it's it's very very much it's very much nostalgia and a weird kind of nostalgia to see this kind of stuff right like it's just man that different time different whole whole different fucking world really yeah so yeah we're we're, we're right in there we're, we're just, like like I said somebody who watched us that was ten years or our, our junior. They might not enjoy this Arnie film very much, and I think that's a flaw of the movie, in, in a way, because you can watch this, and you can watch something like Commando, which is still, even Commando is based in, you know, Latin America is is a drug country, a drug drug countries, mm-hmm. and they're going to take over the world with their drugs, and you know, they're still very much living in there, but you don't feel the same, you know, feel as you do in this movie where. Communist, communist Russia is still not looming, it's kind of winding down, but it's still on the minds of you know, every American in, in the country at this point right. that Russia is evil you get that in, in Rocky IV, uh, the year before this to, to, mm-hmm. where that they kill, you know, the, the African American champion, and Rocky has to be the American hero and in the end, Russia and America come together, and well, that that ends on a positive note. But not till you get to Creed Two, which you know, uh, Drago was a little bitter in that movie. Okay, <laughs> you know? right, right, yeah, a lot bigger. Yeah, there, yeah, there, there's there's a lot of you know the the kind of sentiment is, it's the Russian government that's at fault, and that the Russian people want freedom. They want to embrace America to some degree, and it's like, if you can just, like, melt those fucking icy Russian motherfuckers down a little bit with some good American know-how and and uh, baseball and shit, you, you can maybe get them to smile once in a while, and then maybe this whole communism thing will fizzle out and uh, they'll take their country back eventually. Like That, that feels like the kind of idea that is purported through a lot of these movies at this time is it's like there's plenty of good russians you just gotta like you know give them a little taste of freedom you know just let them taste that freedom teat a little bit and pretty soon they're gonna be just as american as you and me capitalism 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 
I, I, I'm waiting for for Arnie to have a big old piece of apple pie to go with that baseball game he was watching. <laughs> she, she, Ivan, apple pie, America, baseball, America. You know, because the department they're watching the game, and he's he's trying to tell them about baseball. And like they they had baseball in Russia. We we would beat any team or something. He says, and you know, it's it's like mm-hmm. a, it's like a nice moment, but at the same time. Old artists look at him like, oh, no, you didn't talk about America's pastime. You know. A... <laughs> we would win. <laughs> we would yeah. win. But it's, it's, it's fun. They're, they're fun together. I think that's what, what what's the glue of this movie. Because the villain, the villain, unfortunately, have, doesn't have a lot to do. Because he's. No. Yeah, yeah. And then, he act, he that, acts that with his it. fucked up eyebrow. Yeah, yeah, he acts with his eyebrow. I mean, he's a good villain. I mean, Ed Ross does great. He's sleazy, he's skeezy, you know, and uh, but he just, yeah, you said it right, Gary. He, they just don't give him enough to do. Well, he's, he's he's kind of a MacGuffin, right? Like, he's just the reason for Belushi and Arnie to team together and, like, do their adventure. Like, that's kind of why he's there. He, he's not... He's not like a great Walter Hill villain, you know. He he's he's not fucking Powers Booth and Extreme Prejudice or something like that. Like he's 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 just kind of secondary to everything. I, I'm I'm. There's a point in the film where they 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 tell him which hotel that Victor is staying at or was staying at or seen at, and Arnie wants to stay there for some reason. Mm-hmm. I, I would just love a scene where he's like, what room is Victor staying in? And then he, he goes to go sleep in his bed and start smelling his shit and stuff to just like, yeah. I need to get to know who my opponent is, you know. <laughs> I'm going mean, did... to sleep in this cum-stained mattress. Maybe some of his cum is on this bed as well. I will smell it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, mean, I mean, he does. That was a cut the... scene. He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He does put in the quarter on the on the uh, dial on the on the television or whatever, right? And then turns on the porno for him for however his allotted time is. Um, I I did I did read one interesting trivia point that I did pick up on, and to, and I actually had to rewind this to check this. I was like, what? And this is really interesting. So this is the this is an example of the Walter Hill extended universe. Oh, I know what you're going for. Mm. <laughs> So the drug dealer wearing a white suit called Lupo that uh, Rastavilli meets outside the bus station is the same Lupo that appears in Extreme Prejudice, also played there by Luis Contreras. He appears at the end after Nick Nolte has shot Powers Booth and tells him, now you get to wear the white suit. So it's a there's a little bit of an in, in kind of continuation there kind of thing going on, which I thought was pretty cool. I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I picked up on that. I, I remember that when I, uh, I don't know if I picked it up when I first saw it, but in subsequent viewings over the years, I picked up on that. I was just like, oh, shit, that's the same guy, Connected Universe. Also, I got to point out, um, although, you know, I, I can't read Cyrillic, so I don't know if this actually happened in the uh, the Russian bar, but I did not see a Torchies in this movie. So unless there's Cyrillic for torchies in the Russian bar that Arnie goes into to confront the drug dealers, uh, again I'm calling on Walter Hill. What the fuck? Are you doing? It's, it's communist torchies. Come on now, you know. I'm I'm willing to accept that possibly it's communist torchies, but I need a confirmation. I need someone who can read Cyrillic to tell me what the fucking shit on the signs and the walls was saying. If if there's a torchies in there, then I'll be cool. So you know, listeners. If, if you read Cyrillic, reach out to us and, and let us know. Is is that the Russian Cyrillic Torchies? And uh, are, have we have we returned to Torchies in the Walter Hill canon? Are we still like bereft of uh, a, a good Torchy scene? I'd like to believe that it is. There, there's a deleted scene where Artie takes it, it goes with uh, with Arch to to Wrigleyville. Come on, man. We'll have it old style. And blah, 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 blah. They, they, <laughs> they have a whole Chicago montage where they go to Wrigley Field and, you know, all that shit. And, you know, mm-hmm. he, he buys him a foam finger. He's just bored as shit watching his fucking baseball game. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we would beat them. It, it's like the opening of Perfect Strangers, but with Arnie and, oh, don't don't make me write a better movie here, okay? You know. <laughs> Arnie. And, and James Belushi with an apartment together because he's his long lost cousin from Budapest. Oh my god! Whoa, man! Okay. <laughs> that, that that would work. 
I mean that that is perfect strangers. They, they honestly do it, man. Yeah. So somebody write this, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, final thoughts, uh, Cameron. Go for it, brother. Um, it's it's a it's still a fun movie. It just it just hasn't aged well for me, as I've already like previously said in the opening. It's uh, it's just the difference to me between. Uh, it's something I say a lot. It's the difference between a good movie and a great movie. This is a good movie. It's a good, you know, beer and popcorn kind of flick. It's it's not going to change your life. It's 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 no hard times. It's no the warriors, you know. But uh, it's, it's it's still it's, it's it's peak Arnold, you know. And to, and to think that this was him at forty, mm-hmm. you know, the oak. At fucking forty, we could all aspire to be in half as good a shape as him at forty. He was, you know, the action specimen, and this is, you know, a peak Arnold. And I don't mind Belushi in it so much. It's just some of the some of his banter just grates on my nerves after a while. Like you said, Lee, it just he seems like he's trying to do a, a more hyped up version of of Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I still like it. I'm glad I watched it. I actually watched it on my old, really, really, really old flip, flip style box DVD. Wow! So <laughs> I dusted off and like, oh, I still own this. Why haven't I watched this in eight years? But uh, yeah, that was. Uh, not, I need to get an HD version of this. But I like it. I think it really picks up in, in the the final twenty minutes when you get that bus on bus action. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I think it's a classic way of showing. Uh, you know, an action movie where, you know, your actors, quote unquote, aren't really great actors, you know, like yeah. Arn Arnold isn't going to win an Oscar. Jim Belushi isn't going to win an Oscar. So you surround them with a supporting cast, much like our following movie, you know. Oh, which is... man, you're already you're already hitting a point I was going to talk about in the next in our <laughs> Patreon episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on the same page here. But, you know, it's just like surround your action hero with uh, much better actors and he will shine. And, uh, you know, I think it's it's a good movie. It, it's 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 classic Arnold. And, you know, you know, like you want anything more, you know, <laughs> you want Arnold kicking ass. You get it. Lee, final thoughts, sir. Uh, I'm pretty much in total agreement with Cameron here. It is a good movie, not a great movie. And it's a good Walter Hill movie. So that generally puts it above a lot of other good movies from the time. Um, I think it's unfairly overlooked. Like this is kind of, it, it feels like a movie where everyone goes, oh yeah, this is one of the shitty Arnie movies, or this is one of the movies, you know, that they just don't talk about. And I think that's a little unfair. It, I mean, it's formulaic. It's not a big Arnold performance. Again, like he's reserved in this one. So I guess that's kind of one of the reasons why it's not, remembered as fondly as like commando and stuff would where commando just goes so overboard with everything to the point that it's brilliant. (coughs) This one is, you know, it's, it's standard. It's, it's a retread of 48 hours, but it's a really good one. Um, it's got a lot of great actors in it, a lot of great, uh, performances and a lot of fun stuff. And it's never boring. That's, that's the best thing about it. You, You know, even though it's, it's not necessarily, uh, it doesn't necessarily flow as well as like 48 hours. It's it's still never boring. Um, and it's just, it, it's one of those weird things where it's like Walter Hill's doing so many great movies and he's doing great movie after great fucking movie. And he just makes a good movie. And it's like, okay, that's, that's a good Walter Hill movie. And it's not something you necessarily have to think about. It's not the driver. It's not the Warriors. It's not hard times. It's it's a bit of a more fleeting kind of fun, uh, big budget kind of you know Hollywood thing that he's doing. And I mean you know, I at the very least Walter Hill proves he's totally capable of doing those movies as well as doing his much more like personal movies where he's like right, spending, right. A, spending a lot of time on them. Right. So. I mean, it's it's just one of those things where it's like this is every great director has to have a, like a a mid movie, you know, and this is mid Walter Hill. So there you go. Like it's yeah. still, uh, like I said, it's still really really good. 
and it should be watched and it's fun. So uh, yeah. check it out. Even a even a Midland uh, Walter Hill movie is much better than most people on their best day, right? Exactly. Exactly. Like it, fucking, it's fucking Walter Hill. Fucking watch it. <laughs> yeah, like these guys said, it's it's mid tier. You know, Walter Hill, which is not a bad thing. Um, I have a lot of fun with it. You know, you can tell this is this is his um, his popcorn movie. If if you mm. will, that, that this term that's been used all the time, I'll use it for this movie. This is Popcorn Walter Hill, and uh, it, it's it's 1988. It feels very 1988, like 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 we said, and that that's to its detriment, also to um, its strength, I guess, because it, it's it's that kind of movie. If you're in the mood for something like this, you want to go and do it. Hell yeah, I recommend it. And um, chemistry's fine. It's 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 um. Much like another Arnie film, you guys thought the bond they must be destroyed on site. I, I said something for End of Days. This film, um, the, the character actors within it uh, make it better. I think. Mm-hmm. And that's true. Yeah, but that, that's about all I'll say yeah. about this one. I'm sorry. Kevin Pollock is kind of doing the Jim Belushi in that film. Yeah, he is. He is really. Yeah. Um, ma- making it better. I, I I enjoy my time with this one, but um. Yeah, the next thing we should be looking at as far as the the Walter Hill oeuvre uh, goes um, on the main on the main feed, as they say, is um I'm looking it up now. I should be prepared, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dang, that's producer, the director. There we go. After this film, we will be discussing Johnny Handsome. Uh, starring Mickey, oh. Mickey Rourke, which is a film I've never seen before, so... Yeah, I've never seen that either. A um, uh, great film. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't involve him being disfigured and having plastic surgery and much, much like the the real, uh, <laughs> the real Mickey Jesus. Rourke. Jesus. So it's uh, it's yeah. kind of autobiographical yeah. in that sense, but, <laughs> you know... Um, and you got and you got Lance Hendrickson, you know, I mean, oh. come on. I mean, okay. he's playing, playing the heavy. Well, nice. he always plays heavy, but... Yeah. Yeah. Mickey Rourke, uh, Ellen Barkin, Morgan Freeman, Elizabeth McGovern, you mentioned Lance Henriksen. It, it, it should be a decent time. Um, based on a novel. He likes to do the based on a novel. Um, uh, but do you have an idea for the uh, Patreon? Thing? Oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll discuss that when that happens. I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, but the next show on the Patreon feed you guys will be hearing will be Cameron's Choice. Of another Chuck film. We did Chuck last time. We're doing Chuck again. Mm. Uh, set in Chicago. Cop film. Code of Silence. Uh, with another. This is a random cast. I can't wait to talk about. It. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> we'll do that on the Patreon feed. So look for that there. Um, this has been last called Torchies. And uh, we'll see you all again next time. Yeah. Thanks for Thanks for listening, guys. We love you. <laughs>